The official party is about to enter the auditorium. Would you please stand and remain standing for the National Anthem of Australia?
Professor Balcenowicz is the author of more than 100 publications on economic issues in Poland and abroad. And he's made major, major contributions to theory, to policy transformation, particularly in comparative studies of international economies. But he's also made a major contribution to applied economics, particularly as it relates to the financial policies of central banks and the health of public finances. Professor Balcerowicz has been widely recognized for his achievements in the field of economic transformation, and he has received numerous awards. These include Poland's highest honor, the Order of the White Eagle, for his contribution to systemic transformation. He's also been awarded the prestigious Ludwig Erhard Prize, 1992, and in 1998 he was named five Finance Minister of the Year by the British monthly financial journal Euromoney. The following year he received the Transatlantic Leadership Award for the most outstanding European personality of the year from the European Institute of Washington. In 2001, he was awarded as the first person the Friedrich August von Hayek Prize and separately the Karl Bertelsmann Prize. In 2004, he was recognized as Central Banker of the Year for Europe by the British monthly The Banker and was granted the annual Emerging Markets Award in the same year for the best president of the Central Bank in Central and Eastern Europe. In 2006, he was voted by the FinancialTimes.com readers as one of the five leaders of pioneering thought. The University Council, noting his eminent service to the community, resolved that it would be fitting that the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa be conferred on Leszek Balcerowicz. And today we admit him to the University's higher honour. Leszek Balcerowicz, I now ask you to move forward to the Chancellor for the presentation of your degree. In the name of the Council and by the authority vested in this Chancellor of the University of New South Wales, it is an enormous and special privilege to confer upon you and to admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws at its Council. Good luck in all you do and thank you for all you've done. This one passed much quicker than the normal one. <laughs> and it brings us now to the conclusion of the formal proceedings. And we're very uh, honoured, I want you to know, and I'm sure you can feel it, that uh, Professor Velsirovich has become our latest doctor. And we hope that he enjoys that for many years. And we will certainly, I must tell you, Professor, enjoy having the association. What will happen now is that we will close off this part of the event. If you can give us just a short uh, moment to change into something which is much better for listening to very good speeches in, we'll be back and we will be very lucky to hear a lecture on institutional change after communism and that will begin after a very short recess. Thank you very much for coming. It's terrific to see so many of you here tonight. Please come again. after communism requires that I say a few words uh, what is this institutional change and I will start with a brief, a brief definition of institutional system every country has a certain institutional system in a sense of a set of inter interconnected institutions which affect individuals uh, behavior so the starting point was a solid type or communist institutional system, and the change refers to what has happened to this system. So let me first start with saying what were the most characteristic features, and I will not go into a very detailed description, but rather like to present uh, what I would call the constructional logic, a certain stylized description which would disregard the changes over time, and the differences across country, across country, but we 